So today I want to show you how to use the Flashpoint um, strobe. This is the Flashpoint Explorer 600 Pro. <clears throat> so right away you'll notice it comes in a, a carrying case and inside that carrying case you've got the flash unit. You've got a battery for it. You can see that it's kind of thin and it's got a little gauge on top. And then you've got an AC adapter here. We're not going to worry about the battery unit for studio work. We're only using the AC adapter. So I just first thing I have to do is open it up here to loosen it up. You do not want to put it on the light stand with this opening here. There's no screw to secure it and you would lose your tilting function. So I open that up, unscrew the screw until I can feel inside and have no resistance. And then I'm going to take it and place it on my light stand. Tighten that up. And the way I always make sure that it's tight enough is once I tighten it, I pick the whole stand up and make sure that there's no slippage there. So I'm gonna make sure this is tightened up also. I just wanna make sure that there's no resistance or less resistance right there. So that's nice and tight. Then I'm gonna take my AC adapter and it simply just pops right on the back, push down to get it to lock in. There's a power cable inside the bag. This power cable should stay with the bag. It's specifically for the flash points. So I'm gonna plug that in there, plug it into the wall, making sure to get some of these kinks out of it so I don't accidentally pull the flash over if I try to pull on the cord too much. And now here's the key with the flash point. You have two different uh, power switches. On the back of the AC adapter, you'll see there's a power switch right here that you have to click on and you'll know it's on because there's a little red indicating light. And then down on the bottom of the flash, there's a button right here. You push and hold, and then the flash comes on. So going through the menus of the flash point, um, what we're gonna really look at is we've got these buttons out here. Now, quite a few of these buttons we don't even need to worry about. What we're really gonna look at, I'm gonna show you what each one of these uh, does and why we do or do not need them. This first one down here is just the testing button. If you, pop, if you push that, it's gonna pop the flash. Um, this button right here is just to turn on the audible chime. Whenever you make a change, it'll make a sound at you. Uh, down here, this light bulb button, that is to turn the model lamp off and on. You'll see that it just turned itself on to 20% there. I can click it again, it goes to prop, and that means that it's going to try to track with the same amount of power that we have the flash set to. If I hit it one more time, it goes off. Now, let's say that you want it to be set um, at an exact amount. So you click it once, and then you push and hold, and then you'll see it highlights that area, and now I can scroll to change that to whatever percentage that I want. And then when I find my percentage, I can just leave it alone. Let's say I wanted it at 40%. I can just leave it alone and it'll set there. Um, then when I want to turn it off, I just click it two more times and it's off. This button here with the lightning bolt and the H, that's for high speed shutter sync. That's only if um, you need to sync your flash and your camera to uh, something higher than like one two hundredth of a second. If you wanted to use like one five hundredth of a second or a thousandth of a second on your shutter speed in the studio or outside, you would need to make sure that your, your flash is ready for that. Uh, and you do have to use a compatible um, transmitter to, to talk wirelessly to the flash. This is not something we really worry about in the studio. It's really only outside that we usually typically worry about that. Menu. This is something for students. We don't need to worry about this at all, really. Uh, the only time we need to worry about that is if we wanted to turn on that optical slave for some reason. If you were using an Einstein and a flashpoint, maybe, you could come in here and click on that and turn on S1 or S2. But typically, we do not need to worry about that. So the menu button is one that you can kind of forget about. Mode. This is another one to forget about. If you click it, you'll see what's gonna happen is it's gonna go into multi-mode or TTL, so, or manual. Manual's where we wanna live. Multi-mode is for stroboscopic flash. It'll flash repeatedly at different intervals. You can do some creative, interesting things with it. If you want to investigate that, you can do it on your own time. 
but then um, TTL mode is like automatic mode where you don't really control uh, your flash um, for the most part. It, it just tries to do it automatically. Obviously, we don't want to deal with that. We want to do it manually, so we're controlling all aspects of our flash. Up here, there's a little uh, Wi-Fi or a kind of radio signal button, wireless transmitter button. That means that it is, you can see it's active right there. That means that it's talking to a wireless communicator. Uh, if you did not want that, if, if you just wanted to use it um, manually or something, you could push that and turn it off. Typically, that is not something you need to worry about at all, though. And then finally, we've got the group slash channel button. And what you'll see here is the group is represented right here with A. If I push this button, it'll change it to B, C, D, and E. The channel is right up here. Now, if I'm using a wireless trigger with this and I want to change, um, let's say that my wireless trigger is set to group B channel six. Well, then I can just hit this group channel button once to get to group B, and then I can push and hold it, and now I can activate the channels and get to channel six and hit set. Now I'm on B6. The reason you would do that is to make sure that the wireless communicator, the wireless transmitter is talking to your flash. Now if I had multiple um, flashes out here, if I had like, let's just say I had two flashes, maybe I would set one of them on uh, group B channel six, the other I would set on group A channel six. And then what I could do is from my transmitter, I could change the power of one flash independently of the other. So that's how we can change it. Remember, push and hold. Any of these buttons that you see that you feel like it should do something else, just try pushing and holding it and it might have a sub menu. Um, to change the power settings on the flash, it's very simple. As long as you're not in one of the sub menus, you can just scroll right here on the scroll wheel and you can see how it'll change. And it changes in third stop increments. Unlike the Einsteins, which change in 10th stop increments, this is third stop increments. One more thing to keep in mind is with a flash point, if you do have a wireless transmitter hooked up to it to send it a signal, if you change the power on the flash point manually like this, it's gonna get overridden by whatever the, the um, wireless transmitter has set. So if your wireless transmitter had this set to 164th power and it wasn't enough, so you crank it all the way up to full power, you, put, you take a picture, it's gonna look underexposed because it doesn't actually fire at one of one power, it's gonna fire at 164th power because that's what you told the transmitter to do. So the transmitter kind of trumps everything all these settings that you might change manually. So if you don't want that to happen, you can turn that transmitter off um, entirely if you don't want to use the transmitter or make sure that you make those changes on the transmitter. All right, so today we're gonna to deal with light modifiers. Uh, first, we're gonna cover the flash point, different types of light modifiers for the flash point. So the flash point comes equipped with a built-in light modifier, right when you pull it out of the bag, it has this piece on it. This is just a simple, small parabolic reflector. Um, it does a job, so we'll take a look real quick at what it does to the light. You can kind of see how it controls the light. Now, notice what happens if I don't have a light modifier on there. I pull this off. This is just bare bulb, right? So the light kind of spreads everywhere. There's no real control. The big problem with doing that is that the light is very inefficient. We're gonna to have to use a ton of power to get the light where we want it. So we wanna have some sort of light modifier on there. Plus, if we don't have a light modifier on there, if it's just the bulb, that's very dangerous. The bulb can break, can damage, you know, and we can get hurt. So that's the regular light modifier that comes on the flash point is just a parabolic reflector, a very small one. Now, in order to take a uh, light modifier off of the flash point, we have to push this little button here just to release, right? So we pull this back here and then we twist. And you'll see that it comes right off of there. And now we can take a look at a few other light modifiers to put on there. So what you'll notice here is that the flashpoint light, mo light modifiers all have these, these three little cutouts, right? All, all of those have that. That's how you can tell apart a flashpoint light modifier from an Einstein light modifier. This is an Einstein light modifier. You'll see it's perfectly smooth and round. 
there are no notches cut out on it because this, the Einstein, as you'll see later, has a mechanism where it just grabs onto it from the inside. The flash point though has to use this and it clicks in to keep it there. So let's take a look and you can see the difference here between the traditional parabolic reflector that comes on the flash point and here's a larger, a, a seven or eight inch parabolic reflector that you can use on the flash point. So let's take a look and put this on there. This is one of the easiest light modifiers to put on the flash point. Um, now some of these, if they have uh, if they have a silver ring right here, some of them don't fit perfectly on there. So you might have to jostle it around a little bit, but basically you're just trying to line those little notches up there. And you see if it gives you a little bit of trouble, it doesn't want to go in, you might just want to spin it around and try the next notch. And that's only on these with the silver rim. Sometimes they'll give you trouble. Get it in there, click it in, right? So again, click it in there so you can hear it click and you know it's on there. Now, you can see this is a little bit larger, so let's spin this around and let's take a look at what that light modifier does. Now we've got a really nice clear round circle, so the big difference here between that light modifier and this, the one that comes on it is that this one controls light better because it's a little bit deeper. It's not so much that it's bigger, it's that it's deeper. So the light has to travel a little bit more. So we can control light a little better. But if we want to control light even better, then we can use a different piece. So we've got what's called grids. Now we have a lot of these in the studio, okay? But they're all kind of the same. We've got 10, 20, 30, and 40 degree grids. So right here, I've got a 40 degree grid, which we can kind of see directly through, and a 10 degree grid, which we can't see through so well. The reason they have those titles, like a 40 degree grid, the reason it's called a 40 degree grid is it narrows the light to 40 degrees. Now, in order to put this into the flash point, we've got to have this light modifier on there because you can see it's about the same um, size as that. Then there's a little spring, a little tension spring here. We can just fold that in, put it inside the modifier just like that and it will hold itself in there. If you find that the light modifier is larger than the, um, the grid, no problems. We do have a couple of them that are a little bit bigger. Just push it in there and it'll, it'll still stay in there. It might not be as tight. Also, make sure that when you put a grid in there, you leave the tab facing out so that you can pull it out easily. So, let's take a look at what it looks like with the grid in there. And now notice, just a 40 degree grid, there's quite a bit of tightening of the light here. We have a smaller circle. Instead of it, it was really big out here, and when we didn't have a light modifier on there at all, it was really, really big. So we're controlling the light a little bit more each time. Now I'm just gonna take that grid out of there by pulling the tab, and notice the big area now. And also notice that when I put that grid in there, it kind of eats up a little bit of light too, right? It, it's, it, it eats up like a stop of light. So we typically have to pump the power up a little bit on our lights whenever we use a grid. But here's a 40 degree grid. And now let's take a look at a 10 degree grid. And that 10 degree grid is going to eat even more light. But now notice this really, really tight small circle. So when you're really needing to control your light so that it doesn't hit everywhere, it hits in a smaller area, using a grid can help you progressively control where the light hits, whether it's a 40, 30, 20, or 10 degree grid. Now, one more way to really control the light is to use a snoot. So I'm gonna take this off of here and I'm gonna grab our snoot, All right? So the snoot on the flash point looks like this. It's all one piece, whereas the Einstein is two pieces. Remember, it's got those tabs there, so I can just pop that on there. Now, it has rounded tabs, not square tabs, so they don't exactly click in there perfectly. But just make sure that it's on there and it's not coming off. Just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Now, I'll turn on the model lamp there, and notice how we've got an even smaller spot than we had with the 10 degree grid. Very, very small spot. 
So think about this if you're shooting things like jewelry, things that are really small, or even in a portrait, maybe you wanna put a, a, an extra emphasis on just a single part, like maybe just the face instead of the entire body, or just an eye or something like that. You can really tightly control that light. So those are the elements that we use if we're trying to really, really control the light into a small area. If, though, we want that light to be softer, maybe, you know, for a portrait uh, type of a setting, or we want a larger highlight on an object in product photography, then we're gonna wanna use a soft box. Now I'm gonna back this up a little bit because our soft boxes are kinda large. So here we've got a um, Octabox. Sorry, this is in the wrong, did I grab the right one? Yeah, there it is. So here we've got an Octabox. You can tell it's an Octabox because it says on the outside of the package, 48 inch OctaQuick softbox. So with the flash points, these Octaboxes, these softboxes are not pre put together. You have to put them together, but it's pretty simple. They're very much like an umbrella. So I'm just gonna pull that out of there. And sometimes they'll be um, bound together, you just have to unstrap that. Now, what we'll do is we'll lay this down on the floor. So, I like to put it with the speed ring, the metal part, it's setting down, and you'll notice that we've got this baffling piece here all around it, but we can just open that up here, right, by pulling on the Velcro. Very simple, it's really easy to redo. Now what you'll notice here is that we've got this ring and then we've got a pole down there. We just need to put equal pressure on the sides of that. I'm gonna tip it up a little bit to make it easier. Equal pressure on the, on the sides with your thumbs and just push it down evenly until it connects right down there. And then we can just replace that Velcro so it's gonna be a lot easier on you if you do not completely remove the Velcro, if you just kind of halfway remove it. And it doesn't need to be perfect when it goes back on there. We're not earning style points, we don't care about that. All we're trying to do is make sure it gets back on there. Okay, so now we have a large soft box. It's kind of, you know, it's large, it's cumbersome, difficult to control, but what I'd like to do is grab onto what we call the ribs. These are just metal poles in here. Grab onto a rib for stability, and you can see that this, what we call a speed ring, is gonna fit right on there. You do wanna make sure that when you go to put that speed ring on there, this one doesn't have the adjustment actually. So some of these have an adjustment, a little knob that you can unscrew, and it will let that speed ring kind of move freely in there. That's good for spinning the, it around, like on a, on a strip box we have one of those. On this one, we don't have it. But all you want to do is just line those up and then make sure they're in there and then click. So if it doesn't want to go in there the first time, you have a couple of different options here. It might be that it's in kind of cockeyed. You might have to make sure it's flush in there and then twist. Sometimes if it does have that little knob to adjust it, it, it might be loose and you might be trying to tighten it, but it's just spinning. So you have to tighten that little knob and then it will click in there. And then this obviously is gonna create a very large pattern of light, but it's gonna be somewhat controllable compared to like an, an umbrella. It's gonna be more controllable than that. And so when you get done using the soft box, you're gonna grab onto that, ri that rib again, click the release button, twist it away from you, and make sure you hold on tight to it the whole time so you're not putting downward pressure on the bulb. To deconstruct this, it's actually quite a bit easier. We don't have to necessarily undo the uh, Velcro. You have a little spot, a little access point back here that you can unzip. Now some people can easily construct them through here, but it's usually a little more difficult. Deconstructing it is pretty simple though. We just put our hand inside that spot, and then if you can see through here, you can see my hand, I can just pull on that piece until it's loose, and then 
just pull it together and strap it back off and you can put it up.